Good morning, uh, fellow Axis and Allies nerds. Um, I thought I would make a video um, on my on my collection, my set, because um, well, for a couple of reasons. I have uh, gone the route of magnetizing everything. I have my board pitched in an angle to save space. But one of the things, one of the problems that presents is <coughs> storage. Because if all your units are magnetized, you can't very well just put them in a box. They'll all just clump together, and it's a, a nightmare. So uh, the solution I found for this is um, from Amazon. I think they're about $35 a piece, but they sell what are called painter's trays. And they're basically just, I have uh, four of them at the base of my board. Um, let me zoom out a little bit so you can get a bit of a picture of it. So there's one, two, three, four, and then I have my board pitched at an angle. It's a sheet of metal behind the map and then a layer of plexiglass over it. It's probably about a 45 degree angle, which if you use eight millimeter magnets, um, and granted you have to buy a whole lot of magnets, <laughs> uh, but everything is fine. It doesn't slip. There's no uh, concerns about anything falling off. But the big problem is, um, storage so these are perfect because if you go out and get some magnetic paint granted you'll have to put about three layers on there for it to give a adequate um, hold you can pretty much once you have everything magnetized you can practically juggle these things they're not going anywhere i can hold it literally upside down um, so i think this might be the best solution I could have thought of for um, for storing all your units. I had gone and uh, pretty much painted everything now. I think it's um, bittersweet that it's good to finally have everything done the way I wanted it uh, for all my units. But yeah, now all the painting is done. So it's a little sad. Anyway, um, those are the German units. His um, let me slide this. I, I bought, uh, when I made my board, I bought some pretty expensive molding. Uh, it's kind of fancy stuff, and I doubled it back to back, as you can see. So these are two different pieces. And by doing that, it creates a channel that runs all the way around the whole board. And that allowed me to then go ahead and make a, uh, a makeshift slide, like a drafting table, if you will where I can have uh, my rolling. I'll just basically hang a camera on a mount right here during my turn. I can do all my rolling right here. And anytime there's a big battle, I have a separate magnetic battle board that I can put mock units on. And uh, so it all works out pretty well. Anyway, um, here's, a, here's a peek at the uh, German units I have I'm into uh, 3D printing. So I've been doing... Uh, a lot of experiments trying to get zo uh, zoomed in, uh, you know, dialed in. And you can really produce some excellent quality. The detail is just fantastic on, on some of uh, the resin printed units. Um, these are also, there's some metal ones here. I really like the metal ones. The, the, the detail on the metal ones is crazy. It's just, I mean, with all due respect to the resin printer, you just cannot produce what they're they're able to put out with these metal ones. They're a little bit pricey and they chip easy, so you really got to load on a lot of um, a lot of uh, varnish, maybe three layers. But in the end, it's yeah, just really high quality stuff. So I've also um, printed out some custom mechanized units. I have some Siberian for well, not Siberian, but you know, snow. Um, snow uh, environments and then I have the standard issue ones but again everything is magnetized so it's all orderly and then whenever you take your turn you can just pull out that drawer grab whatever it is that you're making and off you go now when I painted my units I tried to basically stick to the um, the original color as best I could here's Russia um, I have white Siberians for them, but it's all pretty clear. And I usually put the roundels under the units themselves so that you can clearly see these are Russian forces, these are German forces, uh, what have you. 
so it's not all that confusing for the folks you're playing with now when it came to um painting like i say i tried to and again everything is you know pretty solidly stuck there and you can lift it up easy enough and use it as you wish um when it came to painting basically i wanted to stick to the original color to some degree so i just did the pilot houses for japan's boats um in white and kind of left that original color um we play uh, on youtube me and my group i got a great group of guys that we play with and you know everybody has different sets and it's kind of hard to keep track so any steps you can take to to make it all proper uh, and make it all uniform to reduce confusion the better off you are so here's um Japan has so many forces on the board right now in the game we're playing that there's hardly anything left on the tray for ground troops. It's a scary world. Um, anyway, so I kind of stuck with that. The one country that I, I kind of deviated from that course with is the United States. As far as their naval units are concerned, I just am not fond of the green. I, I, like, um, I like the gray look. So I basically gave it a bluish gray everything has insignias on it um and let's see let's zoom out a little bit yeah maybe it's better up here uh so it has a bluish gray one of the things that i like very much is um these uh landing craft the um, higgins boats now Often in a game, you'll find your American forces up in 110 or 112 pumping in to Europe with um, British forces or maybe uh, the French. So what I did was I, I made some really, really tiny uh, British tanks and American tanks and mechanized units. I have yet to find a file for small, small artillery, but I'll go ahead and I'll put those on there and then I just took some old standard issue infantry and cut their bodies in half basically so this transport has an American uh, tank and an American infantry and so you can kind of mix and match as you go along as the game goes that way it's you know it's easier than just having a bunch of forces out on the sea zone occupying the limited space you have this kind of allows you to I don't know. I, I kind of like the approach that I took here. Um, anyway, so there's the Americans. <coughs> and I have pretty much every drawer is full. Uh, I have, you know, units that haven't even been painted. There's no need to even bother. Um, but pretty much every unit is, every board is, every f uh, drawer is full at this point. So I don't see me getting any more. I have a lot of customs from uh, Wolf Den Designs. The guy just is, he's so good. At, I can't paint planes to save my life. Like, well, maybe to some degree. I did all these bombers. I don't usually take the approach with America that you're uh, industrial bombing to death and you need 15 bombers, but I had them, so I painted them. And whatever way the game goes, I think we're pretty safe to say we got a ton of units. The Americans... Um, I like the um, I like the metal for the Americans because it's just so much better detail. Uh, you can see the Shermans that come out of the box are horrible. So I painted these ones up myself. Tanks I can do pretty well, um, but I like this sculpt a lot. The um, the Sherman tanks that come out of box are just horrendous. And these are a vast improvement to that. The detail is great. So, like I say, once you're done buying the five million dollars worth of magnets, um, it works out pretty well. I also like the uh, mechanized units that uh, I 3D printed. These are just open files. You can, uh, if you're into printing, you can probably buy them from Shapeways as well. One other ad that I've um, that I've put on my board is. Uh, for the British, here's the British Navy. Just a ton of ships you're probably never going to use in any game realistically. Uh, but I stuck with the original naval, I mean the original unit color, basically that tan. But one thing I like very much is um, 
the British mechanized units out of box are just horrible. So I found an open file for what is referred to as a Bren carrier um, for the mechanized. And the detail on it is so great. You can even make out the, um, the two infantry units at the front. Let me see if I can't do a better job of... Well, it's not fantastic, but you can see the two infantry units in the front. The level of detail is just outstanding. And again, these are just resin-printed plastic. So, um, they work. They work pretty well. And they take, the resin takes paint well. I use the Villagio, Villagio, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Potato, potato. Um, anyway, so, there's that. And, um, for the British, I pretty much just kept the uh, standard issue color and put on the stickers. I did customize some fighters. Um, but, Anyway, so that's the approach I took, and then we have Anzac and Italy and France, and everything is all nice and neatly stored away. So if storage is the deterrent from using magnets for your, uh, for your board, this is a solution that I think makes it all work. I also have, um, I did the magnetic paint on this little headboard that I installed for the lights. Lighting is a big deal. So I have um, the ability to hold like neutral countries there and I made a couple of separate trays for the two countries, Japan and Germany, that I just have so many units for. Um, that Yeah, I also have Imperial Walkers for Germany. Yeah, that's what happens when I play my game. Anyway, uh, these are all customs from Wolf Den Designs and the guy is just, he's incredible. I, he's, I'm convinced he's five inches tall and that's how he can do that detail. Uh, but these are all um, resin prints by me. Those are more custom from um, Wolf's Den. He really does fantastic work. Uh, so anyway, that's my solution for storage. And it seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, again, the, the board has a, a sheet metal behind the map. And then a layer of plexiglass. It's probably a, I don't know, 16th of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, the metal that I used is 22 gauge sheet metal. Now, the thicker the sheet metal that you use, the better magnetization, uh, the better polarization you're going to be able to get from your magnets. Um, so if you are trying to go, if you're just sitting it on a map, you'll be fine. But I don't recommend that because you'll scar your map. So if you use uh, eight millimeter magnets for the very bottom, you can legit just stack as high as you want. It's not, you know, that it's not going anywhere. So it, it works out well with an eight millimeter magnet at the bottom. And I think it's a six that I use for every chip and every unit. And that's how it works for me. So that's my solution to, um, to creating a board that's, you know, more permanent. You don't have to push it away. It's not a big flat table in the middle of your house. You kind of put it in a corner, pitch it at an angle, and it all works out okay. Um, yeah, anyway, there's my set. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, boys.